Adobe's just released a brand new feature that enables you to double the resolution of a photograph inside of Photoshop. It's called Super Resolution, and we're going to have a look at it right now. Hey everyone, Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com. I'm super excited to talk about Super Resolution. Super Resolution is a way to double the size of a JPEG, PNG, TIFF, or a RAW file. What it does is it actually doubles the size of the photograph in dimensions. That means twice as wide, twice as tall, which is actually four times the megapixel count. And it does it really amazingly well. Um, there's also a few little tips that I'm going to show you on using Super Resolution right now. And do me a favor, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications, and you won't miss a video from me. So here I am, I've got a number of photos inside of Bridge, and right now this is working inside of Camera Raw. Adobe says it's coming to Lightroom soon, it's not quite there yet, I'll give you a tip later on how you can get it in. Alright, so what we're going to do is, I'm going to open all of these in Camera Raw, just so we can get straight to the chase, because we're right clicking here in Bridge, and we're choosing Open in Camera Raw. So the reason I've got so many different types of photos is I want to show you how it works on raw files versus TIFF versus small files, processed and unprocessed. You're going to get a really good taste of how this works. One tip, don't supersize all your photographs because you're just going to fill up your hard drive and it's going to take a lot of time to process. Just process the ones you need as you need them. All right, moving on. Let me show you exactly how to do it. And the one we'll start with is we're going to start with this one from the Sony and this was shot literally last week. And this is how it works. Go over the image, right click, and then you're going to see an option that says enhance. You remember those TV shows, you know, where they say enhance and then it suddenly looks nice and it's just science fiction. It's ridiculous. You laugh. Well, here it is. That enhance button has finally made its way to Photoshop. So we're going to click on enhance. So this feature was originally developed for these cameras, Fuji. Um, so you could use the enhance details on the Fuji camera to get a better interpretation from the raw file. It didn't really make a difference on the other photos. But now there's a new option in here. It's called Super Resolution. It tells me it's going to take about four seconds. Now I'm using a Mac Pro, um, you know, with the 32 gigabyte card. So of course it's going to happen very quickly. A lot of it depends on your GPU. Let's click Enhance. And then what happens if you look down here, it says there's one remaining and you see this little turning wheel. And right now it's enhancing the photo. When it's done, the new photo is going to appear underneath. So if we look at this photo right now, and we choose, uh, let's choose 100%, and we can zoom in and we can see there's the boat right there. Now we can also see there's the image. That's the image right there. And you can see the name. All right, now we go to the image that's been created. It's created a new DNG file, and the name has been appended to say enhanced. And if you look at it now, it's at 200%. So this has actually been doubled in size. If we look at the previous one and the new one, and we'll do a comparison in a second, and we'll look and see how well it interprets these. But before I do, there's a couple more tips I want to show you. I'm going to select the rest of these images. And if I want, I can actually right click and I can choose Enhance. And I can choose to enhance all four photos at once. So I don't have to wait for each one. Now, there's another tip I'm going to show you too. But before I do that, this shows you what it's going to look like with Super Res. If I click and hold, this is what it would look like without the enhance if we just doubled it. And this is what it's going to look like when we enhance it. Now, I could click Enhance All Four Photos and it will process. But there's an even quicker way that I'm going to show you right now. And that's headless mode. So if you hold down the Alt or the Option key, right click, choose Enhance, and click, still holding down that Alt key, that would be Option on Mac, Alt Windows, click. Notice it just says four remaining, and it starts working immediately in the background. That's known as headless mode, and it just takes the last settings that you used. And if we look at this, most of these are already done. Let's have a look and see how that Pelican shot came out, because I'm really curious about that one. So here's my Pelican. Let me just change this to, that's 100% right there. Let's look at the new one, and look at that. Okay, so this opens up new opportunities, because when I used this and it went out on the gallery tour with DJI, 
I had to print it pretty small and even then I was struggling to enlarge it and get it to look decent. All right, let's have a look and let's compare these images with uh, doubling it inside of Photoshop and see if this is really any good. So I'm just gonna hit cancel. If we go back to bridge, you'll see that their secondary files are being created. So there's our DNGs and you can see enhanced and regular. So it creates the new file next to it. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab both of these all right, here they are. And why don't we just take this one first and I'm just gonna hold down the shift key, drop it on top of the other one. And you can see there's the original size and you can see it's literally four times larger or twice as wide, twice as tall. So I don't even know why they say it's double the size. It's technically four times larger. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the small one and let's do it the way we do it in Photoshop. So we choose image size And then under image size, we want to change percentage. Let's type in 200%. All right, so we're going to change this to bicubic and see how well this does. Click OK. Great. Now I'm going to drag this over, take it on top of the old one, hold down the shift key. So now we've got the, this is bicubic. And there's the background. Now I'm gonna do one other thing here. I'm gonna revert this. And the reason I'm doing that is there's a newer algorithm. So we're gonna choose file. Uh, we're gonna choose image, image size. And let's get real here. Photoshop has an AI powered upscaling. So why don't we use this and really test it? So this is gonna be Preserve Details 2.0, which is a pretty powerful AI based sizing algorithm. So I'm interested the super resize is actually going to be better because they're both using AI. So I'm going to shift click into here and we're going to do AI based. Okay, so I'm going to hide that for now and we're going to double click, go to 100% and let's just look where we landed. So this is the one done in Photoshop. If I hide this and we look at the super resolution, we can see yes, that's definitely better. See that noise and in fact, why don't I get a 200% so you can really see. Let me zoom in even tighter. Okay, you can see a lot of our artifacting going in there. Let's hide it. Definitely cleaner. All right, moment of truth. How does this compare to the AI based sizing inside of Photoshop? Let's turn that on. Whoa, look at that. See all these little, it's almost like it's painted. Okay, so that's definitely better. Let's hit the space bar. In fact, why don't we just hit the H key and this is bird's eye view, holding down H click, and now we can move this around to the different parts of the image. Now let's have a look at some detail here. Let's drop it right in here on these buildings. We're looking at the super size. That's the Photoshop one. See how we're losing a lot of detail here, noisy there. Uh, these lines are breaking up. Let's click on the AI one. The AI one looks like an oil painting. So let's just forget about that altogether. It's not even a contender. And let me just hit the H key again. And let's look at some smoother areas like the sand. Okay, so this is super size. And you can see there's a big difference. Okay, look around the edge there. Look at the halos around the person using bicubic. Much, much cleaner using the super size. Let's use a different image though. Let's double click, go into 100%. And let's look at some of the details such as her bracelet. This by cubic, you can see it's quite soft. And here's the new version and look at that. Wow, what a difference. Let's have a look at the hand by cubic and then super. Let's have a look at Kellen's face and hair. So this is using the by cubic and we can see, wow, it just really keeps it nice and sharp and brings out the details. Uh, the old way just kind of softened it quite a bit. And that's a 100. Why don't we go crazy and go into 200% and just see what we've got here. Let's look at the eye. Looking in here, that's Photoshop. And then the new way, wow. Look at the eyelashes. So I don't know about you, but I'm pretty blown away with the super resolution and it will be coming to Lightroom very soon. Let me know in the comments underneath. Is this something you're excited about or is this something that you're going to use? 
I'm really curious, let me know. And by the way, if you're new here, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Consider hitting that subscribe button and then turn on notifications and you won't miss any Photoshop tutorials from me. And if you like this, do me a favor, smash the like button into dust. It really helps us with the algorithm and tell all your friends about Photoshop Cafe. And until next time, I'll see you at the... Hang on a sec. One quick thing to let you know. Um, Photoshop is now out on the M1. So the M1 build is live and I've got a video coming in the next day or two about the performance and everything using the M1 on the Mac with the latest version of Photoshop. So until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.